Welcome to Calvary Live, where we're going to encourage you about the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and the power of the cross. We hope that this message will encourage you, to impact you, to know as you enjoy this message today that there's power in the preaching of the cross.
obey God. In Genesis, he was so great, they said he's the seed of woman. In Exodus, he was so great, they said he was the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he was so great, he was the high priest. In Numbers, he was so great, he was the pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he was so great, he was a prophetess to Moses. In Joshua, he was so great, he was the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he was so great, he was the judge of all judges. How many of you know that we serve an awesome God? In Ruth, he was the kingsman of Redeemer. In 1st and 2nd Samuel, he was the trumpet and the trusted prophet. How great, how great is our God. In King and Chronicles, he reigned as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How many knows the great God of God? In Asriel, he was the rebuilder, he was the builder. In Esther, he was Mordecai. In Job, he was the living redeemer. Anybody know how great our God really is? Huh? He was all of that and then a bag of chips. In Matthew, he was the king of the Jews. In Mark, he was the servant. In Luke, he was the son of man. In John, he was the son of God. In Acts, he was the savior of the world. How many know we serve an awesome God? Amen. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Our God is an awesome God. Give God a hand praise if you believe God is an awesome God. Oh, God is an awesome God. He is so awesome. He woke you up this morning. He is so awesome. He kept you in perfect peace. He is so awesome. He made a way out of no way. Would you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. He is awesome. No, you don't understand how awesome God is. God is so awesome that he took a wretch like me, saved me, set my feet on solid ground. Is there anybody here really knows how awesome God is? Man. Debna, he is so awesome. They put him in a grave on Friday. They went looking for him on Sunday. He rose up early and he says, why look for me among the dead? He is so awesome. Maybe I got somebody over here that knows that God is an awesome God. He is so awesome. I was out of money. Bills were due. But he made a way out of no way. He is awesome. He is so awesome. When I lost all my direction, I felt him to be the center of my joy. Is there anybody here really knows that we serve an awesome God? He is so awesome. When doctors stepped out, he stepped in. He is so awesome that when they said there was no way out of no way, he showed up and made a way. Is there anybody know God is awesome? There's some drug addict, there's an ex-drug addict that would say he is awesome. There's some ex this, some ex that that would say he is awesome. Anybody know God is awesome? Anybody know God is awesome? I know it's Thanksgiving. And we're a week before the turkey, but I know that I ought to have some happy turkeys in the house that don't mind giving God a turkey praise and say he is awesome. I don't know about you, but he's awesome. There's somebody that would say, in the midnight hour, I was crying and God comforted me. When I didn't know which way to go, he made a way out of no way. When I was down to my very last, he showed up and showed out because God is an awesome God. 
Would you just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to excuse me because my God has been too good for me to sit up and act like I've been acting. So if you don't mind, just let me just praise him for just a moment. He has been good. When I think of the goodness and all that he's done for me, I can't help but praise him. Because if you would understand the hell that he brought me through, I ought to have a few praises in the house. He's been so good to me. He woke me up this morning. Yeah, he brought me over dangers, seen and unseen. And I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me, I have to say thank you. Ken, you just think back over your life on what God has done for you and if he's done anything for you, I'm going to give you an opportunity to just give him some praise. He's been good. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Somewhere down up in there, they would say, have you tried Jesus? He's all right with me. would say you know Rev, it don't take all of that but then I would have to tell you you don't know my story or where he brought me from what he's doing and because of that it takes all of that and then some so I don't mind giving him praise in the midst you know what I just realized can't nobody do me like Jesus cause he's my friend yeah I have to agree with the songwriter he healed my body and he told me to run on so I just want to tell you today can't nobody do you like Jesus he will be your friend him to be the first and the last the beginning and the end I found him to be the keeper of all creation somebody ought to just shout hallelujah
when I think of the season of Thanksgiving, as we enter into Thanksgiving, and knowing that he is an awesome God, Brother Jones, I think of how he kept me in perfect peace. Brother Jones, I think of how he kept me when I didn't want to keep myself. I think of how he made a way out of no way. I think when I was down to my very last dime, when he always showed up, because he was always on time. He maybe didn't come when I want him, but he always was on time. Anybody know that he is an on time God? I just, I just believe that, I just believe that the healer is here. I believe that the healer is here. I believe that the provider is here. I believe that the doctor of all doctors are here. I believe that the lawyer is here. I believe whatever you need today, you can reach up and grab it, because my God will make a way. Did you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I just believe God is able to make a way out of no way. God is good. Can you give God a hand praise? Can you give God a hand praise? God is an awesome God. He is my redeemer. He is my redeemer. And he is the Lord of Lords. And I tell you, God is an awesome God. You look at the neighbor, tell you, never say, neighbor, you just don't understand. I should have lost my mind. You don't understand all that I've been through, all that I held in high water that I've had to face. But God has always been right there with you. If you believe that God has been right there with you, would you just give God a praise of thanks? I just believe that when praises go up, blessings come down. I just believe that when I think about the goodness of all that God has done for me, it makes me realize how awesome God is. When, when I, I don't know about you, but we take the small things for granted. Did you all notice how the seasons are changing? Did you all notice that the leaves used to be green, but they're turning brown right now? And then the leaves are gonna fall, and then we're gonna get some fresh leaves coming on. Can I tell you that some of y'all are going through a season right now in your life, and it may seem like you're in a season where the leaves are coming off. But can I tell you, no, don't quit, don't give up, because the seasons come and seasons go. And in order for new things to grow, you have to lose some old things. So would you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm in a transition. I'm in a season. Anybody in a season right now? It may not seem comfortable. It may not seem comfortable. It may seem like there's a shaking going on in your life, but it's just a season for God to get rid of some things in order to bring some new things away. Amen, it's just a new season. It's just a new season coming your way. It's just a new season. And in that season, you gotta know God is a miracle worker. You gotta know God is a healer. You gotta know God is an awesome God. In our text today, they, they showed they set the atmosphere wonderful. In our text today, here we have Jesus just got doing miracles in Mark the 6th chapter, the 30 to the 44th verse. And as they were getting ready, he just got done ministering to the disciples. And the text says that they had got up into the ship to go to the other side. And the Bible says that there was many of them that met him on the other side. And God began to minister and God began to heal. I, I need to know, is there anybody here that really believes God is a healer? You know, I don't know about you, but... 
don't just come to church to come to church. I come to church expecting God to do some things. I come to church because I want to see God do what God said he's going to do. I come to church because the Bible says that he says these signs shall follow them that believe. And I'm a firm believer that God can make a way. I'm a firm believer that God can heal cancer. I'm a firm believer that God can heal diabetes. I'm a firm believer that God can heal the liver. I'm a firm believer that God can heal MS. I'm a firm believer that God can heal high blood pressure. I'm a firm believer that God is a healer. I'm a firm believer that God is a provider. And I want to tell you today that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, that God can heal. God can set free. God can also open blinded eyes. I'm a firm believer that God can raise the dead. You would say, Reverend, I think that is impossible. But let me tell you, I believe that all things are possible with God. I believe that God can do exactly what God said he can do. I believe that if God can take a sinner that's down and out, pick him up, change his life, then God can do anything. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am a miracle. I am a miracle. I am a miracle. I am a byproduct of what God can do. I am a byproduct of God taking a wayward child, bringing him back in the fold. I am a byproduct of what God can do of someone that felt like their life was over, their life was out, their life was under. But can I tell you, because God specializes in the impossible, our text would show us in Mark the 6th chapter that Jesus had got done doing miracles tell your neighbor say neighbor God is not short of a miracle he is not short of a miracle you're only one step away from receiving your miracle you're only one step away from receiving your miracle the only thing that's stopping you from your miracle is your faith if you got faith to know today to believe that God can make a way can I tell you that God can make a way can I tell you God can make a way can I tell you God is a healer? Can I tell you God wants to do something today in your life? God wants to heal you. God wants to restore relationships back with you. God wants to raise you. God wants to open your eyes. God wants to open up your natural eyes to open up your spiritual eyes so you can see the move of God, so you can feel his presence and know that you're never alone. The word says that God said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Do I got anybody here that's expecting God to do something today? You're saying, Pastor, I am down I am out pastor I need a miracle in my life pastor I need God to show up and make a way out of no way can I tell you today is your day the Bible says clearly in Hebrews 11 chapter faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen can I tell you if you got faith today you can speak to your mountain your mountain has to be removed. The Bible says in Mark the 11th chapter, the 22nd verse, it says, have faith in God. And then it goes on to say, whatsoever things you say, you can speak to the mountain and the mountain have to be removed. Would you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I need to speak to my mountain. You have to speak to your mountain. If you got faith to believe it, I'm here to tell you that God can do it. Can I say that one more time? If you got faith to believe it, I got faith that God can do it. God can do anything but fail. It is your faith that's going to move that mountain. It is your faith that's going to change that situation. It may look bad right now, but can I tell you what God is doing? He's doing a shifting. The same way he shifted my morning message, he's doing a shifting in your life. He is shifting you to another level. So think it not strange when the enemy comes up against you, but just know that you you have the armor of God on to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have some mountains 
Now you got to be real with yourself. If you have some mountains, you have to speak to those mountains. You have to speak to those mountains. Some of those mountains may be your job. Some of those mountains may be your home that you're living in. Some of those mountains may be some of your friends that you're associating with. Some of those mountains may be that you have a huge need. I don't know about you, but the enemy has came in and he has taken a toll on finances. The enemy has came in and he's taken a toll on confusion. Some of y'all, if you would be honest with yourself, you're at odds with people and you don't even understand why you're at odds with them it's the enemy that has came in to do that to you the enemy knows that if he can attack your mind then he can make you speak those things and if you begin to speak those things then those things begin to come in existence and that's why you got to start speaking the joy of the Lord is my strength you got to start speaking no weapon formed against me shall prosper you got to start speaking my God shall supply all of my needs you got to start speaking i can do all things through christ which strengthens me is there anybody here that would agree with me that you can speak those things in existence as there already is even though you have to face some challenges in your life understand the text here is telling us that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed we can speak to any mountain and the mountain have to be removed would somebody just shout i'm speaking to my mountain i'm speaking to my mountain and so as i speak to my mountain my mountain have to be removed so what i have to do now is i gotta start speaking to the situation that means that no matter how bad the situation is no matter where you at in life you can take control of your life can i tell you what i don't know about you but i used to be in a bad basket case but what I realize is, is that God made a way. You know why God made a way? Because the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? He is a new creature. Can I tell you by faith, I left the old life and start living the new life. Is there anybody here that can say that you're saved by faith? I don't know about you, but I'm saved by faith. I tried everything. I tried everything to quit what I was doing and I was not able to do it on my own self but the minute that I tried Jesus can I tell you what it got better but it didn't get easier until I stayed connected to him huh? can I tell you what made it is me stand connected the Bible says in Romans 12 and 1 yes Lord I shift where you want me to shift the Bible says in Romans 12 and 1, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind have to change. Your mind have to change. I know they may have said, like they said to me, they said, I'll never make it. They said that I'll never amount to anything. They had said it so much, I began to live like nothing. I began to live like my life was never going to amount to anything. But then I heard Jesus. I heard him say, you are a new creature in Christ. And when I heard that, Brother Jones, I began to live like I was a new creature in Christ. They said I was a king, a son of the king. I began to live like the son's king. I began to rise up. I began to realize, Brother Jones, that even as I rose up, Brother Jones, that the enemy came. But even when the enemy came, Brother Jones, I heard God as he sent people like you and your family along the way to say no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He does that. He sends people your way to let you know that he can make a way. I don't know what God is doing today, but I believe God is up to something. God is trying to encourage somebody's faith no matter where you're at. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the season may be in your life, if you would only see that God can make a way, He will make a way. If, you, if that's you today, I know you would say, Reverend, you didn't take a text, you didn't give three points, but God gave a message. He gave a message to you that if you rise up in your faith, 
No matter where you at, no matter where you at, that I love you. Can I just minister to you and come inside your house? No matter where you at, no matter how bad your relationship is, no matter what you lost, no matter what you're going through, today can be your new day of a new beginning. I'm a living witness of what God can do. God reached way down. God reached way down in Areno and saved me. God brought me back to Sepulpa to let you know that he's alive. His miracles flow. His healing flows. His word will set you free. His word is a deliverer. His word is a healer. It is the power of his words. Nothing that I am, nothing that you are, but it's the power in his words. Anybody know there's power in his words? Anybody know that there's power in his words? I love you, I love you, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you, that I love you, that I love you, that I love you more than anything. But I love you, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. what he says in John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son many people probably think that it was the nails that kept him to the cross but it wasn't the nails that kept him to the cross and many of us think that the cross is such a pretty thing but the cross really isn't a pretty scene it was a bloody scene but you know what it was it was Jesus going to that cross, that I love you. taking those spikes I love for us. I love it was Jesus when he went to the cross, and he was beat for us. I don't know about you, but I love him. I love him because he died for me. I love him because he hung on a tree for me. I love him because when I was a sinner, they marched him up the hill, Jones. And he never said a mumbling word. I love him. I love him. Because he could have came off the cross. But I love him, Mother Jones. Because while he was on the cross, he locked his chin. And he never said a mumbling word. 
I love him because that I love when he was on the cross, that I love you. he died for a sinner I love you. such as you and I. I love, you. I love him because I love you. while we you were yet in our sins, you he died. For me. He died, died on the cross for, for you. you. He died for me. You and because yeah. of that, that's power in the blood. I just want to tell that's you that's healing in the blood. I, I don't know about you. I, I don't know about you. But I picture, I picture 2,000 years ago, Jesus on the old rugged cross. I picture, I picture Jesus on the old rugged cross. Standing at the cross. I picture the Roman soldier taking a spear. I picture the Roman soldier taking a spear, Jones, spearing him in the side. And it said the blood came streaming down. Can I tell you that's power in the blood today? All you got to do is love him because he first loved you. That I might be free. I just want to tell you that. I just want to tell you that Just want to tell you Lord, I love you Text. I just, just want to tell you that just want as they to tell you continue to sing Lord, I love as they continue I love to sing you. this song as they continue to sing that I, love. I want you to focus on this as I give my invitation to call as they continue to sing I want you to know that God loves you I just want to tell you I don't care where you at I don't care what I you in. Tell you that I don't care what you've done. I don't that care I what you. they said to you. That I, love you. I don't care that how I love bad you. it feels. That I, love you. I wanna that tell I love you, you that, I love that today you. is your day for a brand new life. Today is your day for God to do what God said he's gonna do. No matter what you're facing, that I love you. no matter that what I you're love going through, you. that I, love you. I want you to know that what he done on the cross, he done for you and I. I want you to know that he was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. I want you to know that he rose on that third day with all power. If you're here today, if you're here today, if you're here today, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're facing, no matter where you at in life, no matter where you at, the Bible says, "Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and you shall find rest." I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell, tell you how you hold your play, your soul you. for me, just me, Holy just me. And I love you, darling. I love yeah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that. Just want to tell you. Yeah. 
That's it. I worship and adore you. I want to tell you that. Just want to tell you. That I love you. Lord, I love you. That I love you. That I love you. That I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you. And I want to tell you that. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. 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 I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you. And I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Father God, just want I come to you right now. I want to tell you that. Lord, and God, I, I thank you right now. You. I love you. God, you know, catch I love you. You know why she's crying. I love you, Jesus. I worship, I worship and adore And I want to tell you that. Just want to tell you.
tell 